Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 43 today for the Singapore Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys missed the previous one at the Australian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That was a bit of a chaotic race, but for the first time we saw a bit of a chink in the McLaren armour as Bottas obviously suffered from some mistakes and Piastri had some mechanical issues and we had a non-McLaren winner for the first First time this season and it was a Red Bull 1-2 which was a massive boost of confidence for not only them but I think other teams you know ourselves included Ferrari Mercedes that we can actually take the fight to McLaren and we just need a few upgrades of course Red Bull looked like they brought in one ultimate upgrade last time out and that's exciting for us then because we've actually got two ultimate upgrades on the way and to that regard we didn't spend any R&D investing into the new engine for season four 2026 you saw on the on the, on the starting screen 5,000 points we banked in so far this season we didn't add to that tally last episode that's because we bought upgrades in time for this Grand Prix so hopefully we can make that step up you know that podium in Las Vegas seems so long ago now a P7 and a P5 although not you know terrible it has did you know it's a long way off where we were in Las Vegas and the races themselves seem so much tougher we really have to fight down under not also because we had to some damage obviously that was unfortunate you know making contact with Pierre Gasly on the opening lap hopefully this time around we can have a cleaner race and really see where the pace of the car is but yeah an ultimate upgrade for our uh, drag reduction and the chassis weight redistribution I think the next upgrade I'm having my looks at is maybe braking because I think that's one area where I feel like the car is a bit weaker compared to other teams around us but at the same time I've always been quite skeptical of the brake updates on the F1 game for the last four years really because sometimes they just make the way too sensitive on the flip side in terms of the HQ facilities you saw that I purchased an upgrade on the engine side to kind of level everything to spec three kind of just for my own little kind of OCD with wanting everything to be level but also I think you know just getting everything to level three would be good to make sure we don't have any bottlenecks going forwards and it looks like on the R&D chart going into the race weekend it's a bloody good thing we bought those two Ultima upgrades when we did can you imagine looking at this chart if we were playing plateauing for a fourth race in a row we would have been probably on level or behind Alpine then but no instead we make some great gains uh, but also equally other teams have made s similar gains McLaren actually have made I think the same upgrades too ultimate for them as they try and keep their dominance over this grid Red Bull following in the same kind of track as they did into Australia and then you can see Mercedes and Ferrari bringing updates to stay ahead of us Aston Martin do bring an upgrade but it seems like it's not going to be enough to maybe keep them ahead of us on paper so we are hopefully going to be a bit more in the mixer I guess but at the same time not a lot's actually changed we're still kind of floating about you know in P5 to 6 on the R&D chart so even though we've made some great progress other teams just like in real F1 annoyingly have also brought uh, upgrades you know so it's uh, it's a tough one here so again it still might be quite a tough fight even with these upgrades because other teams have got even quicker then uh, I, I, I kind of hate to see what McLaren's going to be like in this race then with uh, even further pace and and upgrading brought to their team but of course after a pretty difficult race for them where they lost out to Red Bull big time I'm sure that's kind of in reaction to that you know wanting to stay ahead of the curve and make sure they can make the most of this first part of the season but yeah here we are then the new layout in Singapore that new flat straight that cuts out most of that tricky old sector three I'm hoping that's gonna be to our A because I always feel like I lost out a bit of time versus the AI on the F1 games in that sector but equally at the same time, my uh, first two flying laps weren't that incredible in Q1. You can see on the top left, I'm only P11 and I was a bit stumped at where that time, uh, you know, where I was losing that time out. And I'm not going to find out on my third run because poor chair completely blocks me. Thank God it, it's enough to still get through into Q2 because otherwise that would have been me absolutely screwed and out of Q1. So thankfully we scraped by with those two first poor laps because I never got a chance to improve on that third one because poor chair completely blocked me off. So we're into Q2 then but I feel like I'm on the back foot. Very, very strange. I was actually feeling quite confident going into this new Singapore G, uh, GP layout that, oh, uh, you know, I might have some really good pace here. But it seems like with whatever upgrades these other AI teams have brought, I'm not feeling too quick. Gasly's looking pretty good, though, to be fair. He's up in P4. We're P6. We're going to get through into the top 10 shootout. But Gasly's looking quicker by, by a good two tenths then in P4. The McLaren's 
coming back to business. 1-2 there in quali. That's a little bit ominous. Uh, Piastri ahead of Bottas. Russell's the one in third place. The Red Bulls splitting ourselves in a bit of a checkerboard. Gasly, Verstappen and myself and Lando Norris. Fernando Alonso drags the Aston Martin into the top 10. Leclerc also does the same for Ferrari. And Mick Schumacher features in the top 10 for the first time, I believe, for Mercedes. So good to see Mick Schumacher maybe four races in finally bedding into the Silver Arrows, getting used to the car, and maybe he can be there supporting Russell in their fight up the order and for points. But um, yeah, it looks like Gasly's feeling more comfy. And I've got to say, actually, for all I felt my confidence, I, I think actually I've maybe got slower around this new Singapore GP layout, at least in the my team car. Like when I, when I tried this track out for a, a single video in the McLaren on the base car, you know, I felt really good around this circuit. But with the my team car for this series, I, I, I don't think I've got very, a lot of pace. We're, we're P10 with that first flying lap. Legitimately, I'm actually really slow right now. Two tenths gained in the second sector. We've gone green in all the sectors so far. In this last sector, this corner proving a bit difficult in the My Team car, trying to slow it down, which is also why I think brake upgrades might be a good thing on the way. But obviously, I've got one mind on also wanting to put some more points towards our new engine build. But four and a uh, bit tenths gained on that last flying lap, but it's only good enough to get me up to P9. And Gasly is on the front row. What on earth? I am eight... Nine, pretty good. Yeah, I am nine tenths off the pace from Pierre Gasly, who's got this car onto the front row. He's beaten at one of the McLarens. He's alongside Valtteri Bottas, who gets a very much needed pole position to bounce back from his mistakes in Australia. Verstappen third place, Piastri on the second row alongside him. But I'm here alongside Leclerc, scratching my head. Where is this pace that Gasly's got? And I, I can't find it. I can't find any of it. This is going to be a bit of a difficult uh, race in terms of deal with. Just knowing Gasly has that much pace over me. I've got to hope the race pace is a lot better than the qualifying pace. Maybe there's something I can find in the middle of the race to gain a bit of time. You know, maybe there's a different line I need to be taking through some of these corners. Or the new section, I don't know. I mean, the new section's just a straight. So, I don't know where I'm losing the time in the last sector. It must be other areas of the, of the lap, clearly. So, Gasly doing an incredible job. So, so it could be an amazing race for the team on his side of the garage. And for me, we've got to pull up our socks again because we're, we're once again on the same row we were in Australia. Marina Bay hosted a Grand Prix that briefly ran in the 60s and 70s, but the Garden City re-entered the calendar for good in 2008. We missed it for a couple of years, but it was great to come back to the Singapore Grand Prix. The Marina Bay Street Circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Norris, Mick Schumacher, the owner driver, Albon, Sainz, Ocon, Ricardo, Perez, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, Hulkenberg, Liam Lawson, Leclerc, Sargent, Theo Porcher, Sonoda, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Now, let's talk about Charles Leclerc. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed, they'll be starting out of position today due to power unit component changes. It's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a much more aggressive approach today to make up for that compromised start. Right, heading into this race with uh, confidence not very high. If this was F1 manager, my confidence rating as a driver would be in you know below 50, I think, looking at how qualifying went. 
nine tenths. And honestly, I couldn't tell you where I've lost that. Maybe a bit in sector two that I, I definitely know I've lost, but the rest of the margin, I don't know where 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 the places are to lose. Because like like I said, the the new sector actually is basically just a straight. So where are you lose? If I, you know, it can't be the engine or my, um, the straight line speed because Gasly's doing well. It might be my setup. I mean, the default Singapore setup. I've gone down one click I think it was on the rear wing two clicks up on the front wing so whether that's too much front wing and that's giving me some drag or I should have put the rear wing down even lower I don't know but uh, my day just goes from bad to worse because I now overshoot our grid slot so we're now pushed back and we're starting further back uh, there's a bit of a weird moment where it reforms the grid I think maybe because I got pushed back I don't know but anyway either way we go to five red lights the Singapore Grand Prix Gasly our teammate on the front row like it's out and away we go it's a good start for Gasly could he get into P1 as we go back to our on board and we're going to try and slice through as many cars as we can we get Schumacher we're trying to get Lando Norris and Piastri contact made with Schumacher because uh, he was going for the same gap I was going for Lando's actually jumped Piastri then and managed to stay ahead of me but we're going to get one of the McLarens early on here for P6 Gasly unfortunately I don't think he managed to get Bottas but he is still I think in P2 Two, I want to say as a, oh no Verstappen Verstappen is P1 what on earth happened there Max Verstappen's had a blinder into first place Bottas down to second from pole Gasly third then what a great start that was for Max Verstappen As we now come back to the live action on lap one through the new Sector 3. Saving battery, though, for the rest of the race. We're not wanting to overuse it this early on. But I can tell Piastri is looking for the move. He's right up our gearbox. He's in the mirrors. He's pretty much pushing me through these next two corners here. So we are going to have to use a bit of battery to try and defend. But also at the same time, actually halfway through down this straight, I just think, actually, is there any point defending Piastri? Again, like in Australia... The McLaren is much quicker right now. I actually just, I'm going to lose more time fighting him. I may as well let him through and hopefully as he goes and overtakes Lando Norris, maybe I can get Lando and catch him napping. I don't know. That's wishful thinking though because Piastri has dropped me by two seconds, two laps later. My pace is non-existent here. Like the, the pace we had in quali has actually very much carried over into this race. And I've got no idea where it's going. Because if it was like a like a straight line speed thing, then Gasly wouldn't be as quick as he is. So it, maybe it really is just my setup. Maybe my setup has just got way too much downforce. As we see Bottas slow. Bottas slow from second place. Gasly now is into second. Russell inherits third place. Everyone gets a free position. Bottas going slow into turn one. Oh God, Carlos has just crashed into the fin. We were battling the Spaniard. We took the inside line. Sainz was adamant about taking the outside and he just kept committed for some reason and is driven straight into the back of Valtteri Bottas who is having his own engine issues and that's an appalling crash and it's a red flag. This is the onboard then uh, looking backwards from uh, Bottas's car. A plume of smoke so to be fair maybe Science was blinded by this and couldn't see where Bottas was but eventually you're going to see I'm going to pop up on the right hand side taking the inside line dodging Bottas and Science. Well, to be honest, maybe he just got blindsided by all the smoke or whatever. But you think also, uh, not too great to drive into smoke. From scientists on board, the smoke doesn't even start. Until, he, until it's too late. So just a very, very odd one. Of course, Sainz was probably committed to battling me, but I'd given him room to, to maybe get to the inside or back out of it. I'd chosen my inside line just to defend him anyway. So uh, yeah, that's caused the red flag. So that's actually terrible though. Not even for, for Sainz, for Bottas then. That's two races in a row. He's not going to score points. And his teammate, well, you know, he didn't get on the podium last time. He may well get on the podium today. So that's going to be a big disappointment for the Finn. And now looking at the race strategy for the this race restart. I'm going aggressive. I've gone for the soft compound, as has Albon, Ricardo behind me. Others have gone mediums as we go to five red lights for the second time tonight. 
under the floodlights for Singapore. Gasly from the front row again gets a poor start for the second time and he's going to lose a position to maybe Lando Norris. It could soon be once again a 1-2 for Red Bull as we overtake Piastri. We got a cracking start on the softer compound as you would expect. We need to have a good start on these tyres. Gasly still scrapping with Lando for P2. He's also chosen softs. Okay, fair enough. So as a team we've decided to go quite aggressive on the tyre compounds as Russell has a little nip at the heels uh, at myself but we are going to remain in P4 and actually slide this down the inside of Lando Norris. Lovely overtake and we're up into P3 so you've got to say at the moment the soft compound was a good choice. It's given us pace pace we didn't have on the mediums at the start of that race but very rapidly, Gasly drops me. He's now 3.8 seconds down the road. Russell going for the move. I'm trying to squeeze him and defend against him, but he just gets ahead and, you know, trying to make a switch or anything. Just as soon as we get into turn one, I can see, oh, the grip's not there. And then on the exit, Russell pulls away and I just can't gain on him. You know, through the next right hand, and I'm trying to place the car as well as I can, get on power early, DRS open. But Russell opens up the taps and he's actually pulling away a little bit in the acceleration zone. We do catch him a little bit but it's not enough to make a move really and then lap 10 he's 1.5 seconds down the road Norris now having a go so having overtaken all these guys they're just taking turns to eventually overtake me and get back past me whether that's you know this soft compound not doing so well you could say that but Gasly's not facing the same tyre wear he's doing pretty well in terms of pace so I don't think it's tyre wear I think it's just this same thing of I've got no pace around Singapore. I'll put my hands up. I'm just not very quick right now at this circuit. Um, you know, I've always gone quite well at Singapore, I felt, you know, in previous F1 games, for sure. Um, I don't think it's the new layout making me slower, because like I said, that's only a straight, so where am I losing the time there? Um, so I would say it's set up. Oh, we just got hit by Lando. What? Into the hairpin. We've been hit wide. We have to flick spin the car. Uh, to get it round. All of a sudden, we're down to P8. I was in the middle of just talking about frustrations. We've got more frustrations now because we've just been bumped down by four positions uh, thanks to our old title rival from Season 2. Our day, or, or should I say our night, is going from bad to even worse here. Now, uh, under the bridge and... Just what was that? Lando just outbreaks himself and uses me as a brake pedal and pushes me wide. Absolutely unbelievable stuff there from our old title rival. I guess the rivalry is still going true from season two to season three. No love lost there, but uh, for us, there is very much a loss of pace because uh, I'm going to come in lap 14. It's a bit of an earlier pit stop because I think these softs just aren't performing very well. In reality, I think a large part of it is just me, to be honest, at the Singapore GP. But at the same time, uh, you know, this car has been known to work better on the hard compound attire. So we are going to go to it on to the end of the Grand Prix, which is not too bad, to be fair, at Singapore. Half the race distance on the hards is fair enough. This is probably the, the lap we were going to pit around off the mediums, uh, you know, had there not been a red flag. So we're in changing our set of boots. We are going to drop to the back of the grid as we're the uh, only one pitting this early, kind of showing you the desperation. And it really is going to be a long stint, so not in terms of distance, really, just in terms of me looking to try and salvage something from this race and trying to feel any sense of grip in this car because even in the corners, it wasn't feeling amazing. I wasn't confident on brakes. So it's like the car didn't have enough downforce force and also is maybe too slow in a straight line but Gasly's running well we're now five laps later lap 20 Lando Norris leads on mediums but he's yet to pit he's pitting now with 11 laps to go so it will mean that this man Fernando Alonso he was behind us when we made that pit stop on lap 15 he's going to take the lead he's been on hard since the red flag and he's going the distance whereas Verstappen Gasly Russell all these men have pit again I think they pit around lap 17 18 so they're on fresher tyres catching Fernando but Alonso is trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes and try and go to the end on the same set of hard tyres. But Verstappen is going to be right up behind him on lap 21. 10 laps to go. I think he's got it in the bag. He's going to get the overtake. But Gasly's not too far away, you know. There he is. He is going to be in a net P2 if all three of these guys, Verstappen, Gasly, Russell, overtake Alonso on the older tyres. So, you know, it goes back to this conversation about myself. You know, it's clearly not the car. The actual car itself 
is good because Gasly's performing so well. So it must be something I did with this setup or, you know, my, my engine parts aren't worn. They were perfectly fine. So Verstappen making the move for the lead, but I, I feel like it was pretty inevitable to be honest. No shock. Verstappen on fresher hards has made the overtake, but look how close Gasly is now. Alonso has uh, bunched up Verstappen enough that Gasly is only a second away from maybe going for the race lead himself. Russell up into what will be a net three once they overtake uh, Alonso and I think by lap 22 by this point they probably have but here I am then 3.6 seconds behind the man who punted me off at the hairpin we've got work to do if we want to try and catch up to him but uh, Ocon 2.1 that gap is coming down Ocon is closing up to me in the Alpine on the mediums yellow flags ahead there's a car ahead of us it's Lando Norris oh my god we narrowly dodged him but Ocon slowed down for him as well as the Alfa Romeo Haas and it's a second red flag of the day because Lando Norris was facing the wrong way and pretty dangerously I'm, I'm surprised the Alpine didn't crash into him because he was literally on the racing line. I mean, I almost crashed into Lando because it's probably the worst uh, worst place to spin it. Literally, that's the racing line. I had to dodge that so last minute. I'm actually quite lucky to still be in the race because I saw the yellow flags came up, so I was a bit cautious, but I didn't know where he was. I didn't actually look at the minimap on the left until it was too late, so I had to make that late call to, to, uh, to dodge him. So we're quite lucky to still be going. So because of the red flag, we've gone off the hard, back onto another set of soft tyres as we go to five red lights once again here in Singapore. It's turning into Brazil again with the two red flags and so many changes of tyres without having made a pit stop as we make the double pass on Albon and Schumacher and we're going to try and vault this car around the outside. So once again, like the first red flag, starting off really quickly, but that's just because, uh, as we've seen over the course of this game, you know, the, the AI aren't amazing at starts. Or, or I'm, I've, got, I've got it quite nailed on, I feel, with race starts versus the AI. So we've managed to jump three positions up to P5. If we could keep this P5, this would be an incredible result considering the lack of pace I've got. Um, and also in all of this, look at the top left. Gasly's P3. Alonso, he's won out big time. He ma he's been able to change onto fresh tyres under that red flag. So Alonso's gone from being behind me in P10 or 11, was it? To now fighting for a legitimate podium, uh, where whereas uh, Piastri has overtaken me, we're down to P6, and that's the last I'm going to see of that McLaren. I'm looking around desperately at the menu, looking to see if I've got damage, the engine, wear, nothing. There's no damage on the car, there's no engine wear. I just don't have any pace. I don't have confidence under braking with this car. I feel like I'm braking. Well, you can see that I'm blocking the rear end, actually, braking there, as I've changed the bias a bit, because I felt like I was locking up too much of the front, but that started to lock up the rear end. And then mid-corner, there doesn't seem to be enough downforce. But then I'm also losing time on a straight compared to other cars. Very, very baffling. This is, I haven't been this baffled in a race since Baku in Season 2. Oh, my God. We have managed to just keep that out of the wall. But, mamma mia, we are playing dangerously there. That could have been a DNF. That could have been uh, some massive embarrassment for me. We're going to re-dive bomb Albon to re-overtake him because I was fed up with... Uh, just losing more places. So I want to gain one back. We've overtaken him. Schumacher's followed me through the Wally old Fox, learning well already uh, from you know, taking a moment. But Schumacher in the Mercedes faster than me on the mediums. It's just very confusing. I'm trying to fight him. Schumacher does very well to defend from me there. Blocks me off for the switch back from the right to left. But um, he's got ahead of us. I thought, okay, maybe I can get him back here. We've got some DRS coming up. I've got a little bit of battery through this corner. Bit of understeer. Not the best racing line through there. And he gets the exit. He's two tenths ahead. And with DRS, we hardly make really any inroads on him. One tenth, but not enough to make a dive bomb. And at that point, I had to accept I wasn't going to overtake him. So that is it then for me in terms of the highlights of this race. Max Verstappen is going to come through to win the Singapore Grand Prix. It's huge for Red Bull. Back to back victories from Australia to Singapore. Alonso, incredible finesse for second place, but Pierre Gasly gets his first podium for the team, and it's in a race where I am just scrounging to stay ahead of Albon and Ocon for P7, whilst they're on hards and I'm on soft. So as they climb out of the car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. So Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process, and that work is very much paying off. 
The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. Very much a race to forget for me. Uh, honestly, uh, this felt like this was Baku, but maybe even worse in some ways from season two. Again, let me know, guys, in the comments below. If you've tried the new Singapore GP layout with your My Team career modes, not in Grand Prix, I mean, let me know how you how you got on. Did you find it as challenging as this? Because I don't know. When I tried this track out in Grand Prix mode, absolutely fine. I was on pace. But today, with the My Team car, just absolutely nowhere. Gasly, you know, eight tenths quicker than me in the race. With, a, with his fastest lap in the race and not, you know, nine tenths quicker in quali, eight tenths quicker in the race. It's just baffling. A real head scratcher. We're going to have to go away, do some homework and see what on earth went on here. Uh, whether it was just track specific or, or what, or it was just Gasly's day to shine and he was dragging that car to, to higher positions considering where we are in the R&D chart. It could have just been that. It could have been Gasly just pulling a blinder and that's where the car really was for me today and for the team uh, on our side but uh, big day for Red Bull back-to-back -back wins McLaren well Piastri gets a top five but it's another race where McLaren haven't made the most of their dominant kind of you know in theoretically dominant position in the R&D chart and on the grid so it is interesting times as Red Bull are really trying hard to now catch up to McLaren and well they have caught up with two wins but in terms of the standings they are getting there as well so McLaren need to pick up the pace a bit because otherwise they're going to blink and soon, sooner rather than later, hopefully a lot of us are going to be close to them in terms of R&D and then it's going to be a whole different ball game. And for my sake, I really hope we're, we're a lot closer to people next time out immediately on a different circuit. But guys, if you have enjoyed that one nonetheless, then be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.